Today we're doing a collaboration that was started by Roots to Refuge Farm. It's all about homestead reference book collection or reference collection. <coughs> so we have done a video like this before where we've talked about some books that we really really like and we find really really useful and it is one of those things in today's day and age even though technically information is very available the validity or the truth or the application however you want to put that the information you're getting from all sources might not actually be the best information having a reference library that you can trust if you're homesteading gardening or even just growing a, or even preserving a very little bit of food whatever you're doing whatever scale it is having that dependable go-to information that you know you can trust you know it's vetted you know it's going to be very helpful for whatever it is you're doing is absolutely vital and it's even better probably to have the physical copies because digital is great but digital can very easily disappear really i find this collaboration kind of like those old church cookbooks that you used to be able to get. You know the ones where everybody puts their favorite recipe in and they're all fighting over, not fighting, but they're kind of conversing and trying to outdo the other with the best recipes that they, could, they have in their repertoire. And that's sort of what this kind of collaboration is. It's something that you can count on to be the best books that people want to recommend to you. You know that they use them time and time again and they're tried and true, just like those recipes that are in the church cookbooks. So for anybody that's been following along with us up until this point, you know very well that we've been doing this for a long time. It's coming up on the end of the 15th year, 15th growing season, which that's a while. We've done a lot of different things. We've grown a lot of different plants. We've done a lot of different gardening techniques. We've had a lot of different animals, kind of done it all, <laughs> almost. Kind of without further ado, we're gonna get into it of some I guess top picks from us across a bunch of different homesteading genres or things that you would typically do on a homestead that we think are really important or very useful to have in your homestead library. As we go through our list of books that we would recommend for most people, whether you're starting out homesteading or you've been in it for a while, you're going to notice if you followed along our channel before that this is repetition. We use these books a lot. We recommend them a lot. They are fantastic books that we have used over quite a few years. But definitely one that I wanted to start with was one that really, and this sounds funny, but it actually appealed to our kids. And that is why I think it's one of the best books to have in your homesteading library. Because if you can get your kids interested in something, that's saying something. <laughs> but the book I'm discussing here is the Backyard Homestead. The one thing that I think I should have mentioned as we were talking here is produce all the food you need on just a quarter acre. That is the real big appeal to this book. So I've actually got my finger in here ready to go, but this right there was their favorite part of this book. And it is basically showing half acre, quarter acre, three acre. It's showing how you could lay out your homestead to get the best use of it and the most production I guess you could say and different things that you can grow together and it's all laid out in such a wonderful basic way that it was great they'd come back to us going I'm gonna plant this did they do it well that's a different story entirely but at least it piqued their interest and they were excited about it for that moment uh, the other thing that's in here is a lot of great information on mulching your plants how to get optimal conditions for best growth, things like that. There's stuff on livestock husbandry. It, it's, it's just an all around great basic book. Don't get me wrong, if you're focusing on something in particular, you're probably gonna still wanna step up from this, but a great place to start and a great book to have in your reference library. So I'm gonna change gears a little bit and talk about something that is more foraging based and it's something that I guess it's not new to us, but we've really gotten into it in the last couple of years. And the book of choice is The Weeds of Canada. So we are in Eastern Ontario, which, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of Canada, isn't that far uh, north, but this book does cover uh, parts of the Northeastern United States. And the reason why I like this book, it's not descriptive in exactly how to use the plants but again this is my biology side coming in and I have tons of reference books but I picked this one because a lot of those edible 
weeds or useful weeds weeds of course is a totally relative term a lot of people don't know how to identify them and uh, I've spent decades <laughs> honing ID skills over time but this is still a good book because it goes through a lot of the common species and it also shows what they look like at different stages in their life and I find ID books uh, when you get into flowers and things they tend to be very North American centric a lot of these quote-unquote weeds are introduced from Europe. A lot of those European plants that were brought over were brought over for specific reasons because they usually had edible or medicinal properties. So sometimes they're a little glazed over in uh, some of the more common reference books for things like uh, flowers and, and native herbs and shrubs and that sort of thing. That's why I picked this book because knowing your weeds not only is useful to basically figure out how to use them because once you know what it is and you know you have lots of it you can very easily go down the rabbit hole of more research and finding other books and other resources of how to use those things but if you don't know what it is you can't use it so id and understanding what the species is is vital if you're going to forage well we are mid-october and we are finally i think in the closing stretch of canning and preserving season there's still a lot out in the gardens to go but we're getting there and it's feeling like the pressure is relieving a little bit but that brings me to a uh, discussion on one of my favorite books that i think is essential for most preserving minded homesteads gardeners that sort of thing and that is the paul blue book of preserving so this is the 2017 edition. I know there's a newer version, so this particular one might be a little harder to get on places like Amazon and whatnot. But that is where we have our apple juice recipe, our stew recipes, so many great, great things in this book. It's my go-to. I use this over and over. As you can see, pages are worn, and uh, it is something that I think everyone should have. So the next two books are very garden-centric. I think, actually I shouldn't say I, we both think gardening is one of the probably most beneficial and a huge component of homesteading. Even though it's not always super interesting, it's very useful to have a lot of garden skills. But I'm going to go back to something that I personally am extremely passionate about. And part of that comes from being a biologist. Part of that comes from the, the time I've spent gardening, for lack of a better way to put it. And this is something that Uniquely, I thought about right at the beginning when I started researching varieties of vegetables and things that I wanted to keep. I wanted to learn about how to save seeds, not only the skills of how to physically do it, but also the skills and the theory behind if I want to keep a certain kind of tomato because of its unique values and qualities, how do I do that? And again, for anybody who has watched along with us, you've seen these books before. They are how to Save Your Own Seeds, which is uh, actually a Canadian book. It's a little hard to find. It's from uh, Seeds of Diversity Canada. And Seed to Seed, which is a much easier book to find, fortunately. Both of these books are great in tandem because we don't necessarily pick them up every day and use them. And it seems weird maybe in October to be talking about seed saving because you sort of think of seeds as a spring thing. But this is the time of year when all of these vegetables are getting ready to basically go to seed. It's kind of at the forefront of our minds, for lack of a better way to put it. And we've been actively collecting a lot of So this is going to sound a little whatever, but I think sometimes people don't think about seed saving as much as they should. I'm kind of of the opinion, and I've never actually explicitly said this before, but I actually think every human on the planet should know how to do this. This is possibly, from an actual surviving perspective, more important than even some of the things you learn in school. I've, there, I have said it. <laughs> Although I don't remember the exact place that I got this from. This is something that I think is important if you're going to get sort of non-printed, non-book format stuff. Print it off. Keep a hard copy. This is some information here that I've tucked away inside my uh, seed book. And uh, it's basically on companion planting. So essentially... Even if that may not be the best resource going, I still have a hard copy resource that's always with me because it's always in this book. So as we get to the end of this video, and we're losing light because it's October and the days are getting shorter, especially for us, we're going to talk about two books that we really like for livestock. But for the preface, 
we have tried raising everything, <laughs> almost, from chickens, turkeys, geese, ducks, pigeons, rabbits, sheep, goats, cows, pigs, the list goes on and on. So the first book on this list for livestock is actually Small Scale Poultry Flock. Now, there is a new version of this, or a new edition. I have not read it, but I have heard good things about it. This book was really fascinating to me because I started my poultry endeavors basically in year one. I did a lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of collecting information. I didn't know about this book until later on. I forget exactly how many years in I was, but what was fascinating to me is the way this book presented things was very similar to the ideals and the way I was trying to do things. So I really liked this book and I think if anybody has not started raising poultry, this is one to definitely consider purchasing. I do find now we don't go back to this as much because we've been doing it for so long, but it's still a really nice book to have on hand because there has been instances where we do go back and it just, you know, re-cements things in your mind. So from a beginner standpoint, I would say if you're trying to do it on a small scale, mostly to feed yourself, this is like indispensable because it will give you a perspective on raising birds that you really don't get in a lot of other publications. And I will just leave that as that. So the other book that I think is a really good book to have in your library, although potentially only if you're thinking of raising this kind of livestock, is The Story's Guide to Raising Ducks. The Stories Guide series, if you're looking for sort of entry level and, and in some cases a bit more advanced information on raising different livestock, these are a great go-to series and they're great to have. But I picked this one in particular because I think if you want to raise waterfowl, you want to raise ducks, there is no other guide, there's no other book that I'm aware of that is as in-depth and just all around as good to have as this book. This book is sort of unequaled and what's interesting about it and why I picked this even though we no longer raise ducks. Ducks was actually what we started with for, and we don't raise them anymore for a variety of reasons but why I picked this is because even though chickens are our, sort of our go-to poultry now I've never found a comparable book to the level of detail and basically knowledgeable information all synthesized into one place for chickens as there is for this book for ducks. So I'd be curious because I've read a lot of books on chickens and assimilated a lot of information on chickens and never found anything that comes close. There you have it. We're going to end the video there. That's sort of our top picks from our library of books that we either think are phenomenal introductory books, i.e. very indispensable if you're just getting into homesteading, or really good books to have on hand because you will likely go back to them time and time again and you'll be really glad that that information is sitting on the shelf in your library. Sharing a resource library between like-minded people who are actually doing and living this lifestyle, we think is an absolutely phenomenal thing. So looking very much forward to uh, seeing what everybody else comes up with. Big thanks to uh, Jessica from Roots Refuge Farm for suggesting this. I think uh, the reasons that she suggested this collaboration are phenomenal. Check out the playlist so that you can basically see what other people are recommending.